Well, John, it's your time to turn and burn in the sun, buddy. Here's your X-Force 2 by 6, which means two transistors driving 6. Now, John sent me this, uh, this beautiful note. Here is my 8-pill box. Do your magic. Sky's the limit. I know you will. You are the best at what you do. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. So I read the note and it went okay. We're going to be working with a brand new X-Force 2x6 or 2 or 8-pill. And I popped the lid and I uh, immediately got to call John because I'm like, John, bud, uh, I hate to disappoint you, buddy, but you got a 2x6. And he goes, oh, what? And I said, a 2x6. You got a driver section hitting six transistors. And John goes, man, I bought that at a truck stop sales joint. And they swore to me it was an 8-pill. No, sir. It is a 2 driving 6. So I got to talking with John. Now, he used the term, sky's the limit. And a lot of guys, they send their stuff up here, and they say that. And then I come back to them and say, well, it's going to cost $950 flipping dollars to do everything to it. And they're like, what? I didn't even pay that much for the box. It's like, look. I'm not using $11 a piece components. I'm using each one of these transistors. I got to pay the same amount of money you would if you went to RF parts and bought them. I'm paying $65 a whack. <sighs> it's discouraging to me, but times have changed. Taking into account, I've been in this radio game thing since I was 12. And I can remember back when pre-internet and all of that other stuff, I can remember back having the RF parts catalog. I remember they used to send you little catalogs about yay big and about that wide. I'd flip through it and I'd get down to the 2879s. It's like, man, someday I'll have enough money together where I can, I can spend $250. God, that's a lot of money. But I'll get, I'll get them orange dot transistors, those 2879s. I get the highest beta gain to them. Remember, that's a kid at, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old that's thinking like that. So we jump in the way forward machine, and here we are now. I just turned 40, and <laughs> I buy 16 transistors a week like it's nothing. <laughs> Ah, oh, times have changed. Anyhow, uh, this was a brand new amp directly from X-Force. Um, I'd have to say this thing was probably not even three months old, four months old. But uh, he admitted, he said he probably overdrove it a little bit. I said, okay. Um, when I went in here to go look around, this transistor and that transistor had burnt 10 ohm resistors. Here's all the stuff I took out of it, all the wire and stuff I had to change in it. Here's the two burnt 10 ohm resistors. Here's the... Uh, RFT PP100s. These are lot number 15XH. These are both bad. But uh, here's the other ones I pulled out. Now, when he said to me, sky's the limit, I went ahead and I took that literally. I went in here and I changed a bunch of stuff. Um, let's see, I got pictures. Let's cut to the pictures, okay? Let's cut to the pictures, okay? So I went through and I replaced all the wire inside the box. And uh, I mean all the wire from the uh, ground chokes to the on-off switches to the remote plug to the wire coming in and going out to the power leads to everything. I went in and I replaced the flame-proof two waters that were in this thing. I put five waters in their place. And then I put a match set, match beta gain set, and when I mean matched is I mean within 1% matched, uh, red dot Toshiba 2879s. And um, had a new power wire for the distribution, new power wire here, pulled out the, with the PP80s I think is what they're called, pulled the PP80s out, put 2290 Toshibas in there, which were also beta gain matched within 1%. Changed the uh, output capacitor on the transformer so it would be right for these particular components and then I went and rebuilt the combiner ring which was all burned up changed the output capacitance changed the capacitance on the two pill section changed the input capacitance there was this resistor as an attenuator on the input removed it got rid of it completely changed out the wire 
that feeds the input to the box. Um, got rid of this wire, or this resistor, which was soldered here to ground a little 2 watt 100 ohm. And then there was a wire that went over to the variable. Got rid of that, I put a 5 watt resistor in its place, made it so it's directly to the cabinet so we didn't have all this extra induction in the circuit. And uh, cleaned up all the solder joints in this thing. Had to move this electrolytic from over here to here. And that's it. After we retuned it and got it all off and running, this thing runs titties. Now, I did take a couple minutes, Mr. John, and I went ahead and I cleaned your fans. Um, they were quite dusty and dirty. And I figured since I was in here, I might as well do it. I went ahead and replaced the wire that comes off the fans to uh, high temperature Teflon. And uh, then I zip tied down the ferrite beads, which were just hanging, dangling in free space. You want to support those because they're heavy. And of course, we're in a mobile to where this thing's going to be bouncing around a bunch. Um, yeah, basically took all the little bugs out of it and made it solid. Mr. John, this is it, buddy. Here's all the parts that I pulled out of the amp and uh, replaced with different stuff that uh, will last and work a lot better. Let's go ahead and get on with the testing. We're going to run at 14 volts today. We're going to use a 1,000 watt slug and PEP, 1,000 watt slug and average, 5 watt slug and reverse. We're going to use a 2950 and the striker here in a minute. We're going to use that 5 watt slug between the 2950 and the amplifier to show input tune. We're going to use that 5 watt slug between the 955 and the amplifier to represent input tune. And that's it. I think that's everything all the way around the gambit. Show it from both sides. Okay. So first let's key down and we're going to show how much we're going to put into this for drive. Now, John, you told me that you're using a 99, I do believe, um, a 99 version 2, which would do about 80 watts or so. But you said that you've got it turned down so dead keys one watt swings to about 40. And oh, audio. We're going to put 20 watts of drive in this thing and I want to show you something. 20 whole watts, right? And oh, audio. Watch this. Turn the amp on. That's the other thing is I wired your switch so up was on and down was off. So the other way around. It's just pegging that needle in the corner. So let's go ahead and go on up to the 2x position. So now full deflection on this box, or full deflection on the meter all the way over there at the 50 mark or the 100 is going to be 2,000 watts. So right in the middle, looking at that bottom scale there, the 20, the 40, and the 60, that hash mark that's right in the middle, right about here, that's going to be about 1,000 watts, right? It's about 400 bird. That's 16, 17, and some change over there in a the corner. And that's what I told you it would do. I know you wanted this to be an 8 pill, but it's not. Um, the heat sink in this box comes directly to here. The 2 pill section comes directly to here. So, and to help support it, they put in this tab at the back to uh, make the board so stiff so it doesn't flex in the back. Where in the old days we used to take heat sink and run it back to about here. And this thing we'd just leave the heat sink all the way back to here and then it would support the board from underneath and keep it from vibrating. But that's a good idea. It helps the amp not to flex quite as much. Um, I left the stock power leads in it. You said you didn't, I didn't ask you or you didn't mention that you wanted to upgrade those or change those. I'll let you view this video before we ship it, and you get back to me and let me know if you want to change these leads out or not. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, let's see, before it leaves here, I'll make sure to put a body plug down in this hole, which was just left open and bare. And, uh, yeah. 16, 17, some change. Hello, audio. Here's our input tune. Hello. Hello. So less than a half a watt. Now, John, one last thing. If we look down here on a relay, we'll see that there's this cap. I had to add this cap, and that was to help get your pass through standing wave down. Otherwise, when the RF comes in from this connector and goes out, and the amplifier is not in line. Otherwise, when you're in the receive mode or the amplifier is off, 
I had to add that to make sure that the SWR going through the box. Is within specifications. So let me hook up the 955 and we'll try it with a whole lot more drive. Alrighty. We got the 955 hooked up and that's all we changed. So let's shut this off. Let me show you some input drive. We got to go back to the 100 watt setting or the 1000 watt setting. Hello, audio. So now what we're creating is what we've got ourselves here is a dual final MOSFET radio that puts out about 90 watts. The same as what your um, Galaxy uh, 99V2 will put out. So with 90 watts of drive, let's go back over to the 2x setting on the meter. Check this out. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. Now we're getting up there to about the 1800 watt mark. Hello, hello, hello. Still less than a watt of input reflect, which is great. Taking into account we're jamming 90 watts into it. It's working fine. John, you're all done, bud. I'm going to put the lid on it. I'll get a shipping quote. I'll get with you, and we'll get her sent off tomorrow. Gentlemen, my name is BBI. Without a shadow of a doubt, I'm the biggest mud duck in Idaho. Come check us out www.bbiamps.com come find me on facebook twitter snapchat instagram and of course right here on youtube if you like what you've seen subscribe follow along make sure to click the box down here on the bottom left down down there on the bottom left to get notifications that way you can follow along with everybody else guys i appreciate your all support now i want to tell you and remind everybody the weather out here in the northwest has been shit it has been horribly bad. All my timelines, my ETAs are all suspended. We're looking at probably another 6 to 11 inches of snow in the next two days again. Backed up with another day and a half of freezing rain. So, it is what it is. You guys all know that I work another job. I do this on my part-time for fun, which even though it's turned into more of a full-time job... I can't, I can't sit here and tell you what I got to get done when it's going to happen because the weather dictates my schedule a lot. Remember, this is a freak 30-year storm that we've been putting up here with the last three weeks. So, Appreciate you all. Appreciate you all's patience. Uh, the gates are back open. It's late enough in the uh, beginning of the year here to where I believe the brown shitbox kickers aren't going to start smashing anything. We're going to be sending stuff out of here, and I'm ready to receive stuff again. I'll see you guys. We'll talk to you soon. BBI. With another one rebuilt and another guy 10-8 and straight. I'll see you, bye.